Haunting beauty and echoes of histories long abandoned, enigmatic remnants of the past frozen in time. We're venturing into the mysterious world of abandoned cities, where once ambitious dreams and architectural ambitions now lie forgotten. From the lush Amazon jungle to the eerie Namibian desert, from a sunny Caribbean island to frozen Siberia, from the heart of France to a country you didn't even know existed, get ready as we count down the ultimate top 12 abandoned ghost cities around the world. If you enjoy our content, make sure to like and subscribe to One Mega Projects. Number 12. Fordlandia, Brazil. Deep into the heart of the Amazon rainforest sit the remains of what was once a utopian dream city, built by none other than the automotive pioneer Henry Ford in the 1920s. He took pride in the fair treatment of his staff, but he became increasingly convinced that his responsibility in shaping society had to extend beyond the factory floor and encompass entire cities. Ford's venture into Brazil was primarily driven by business interests, as the monopoly on Sri Lankan rubber held by Britain was driving up costs for his new Model A cars. But Ford's vision ran much deeper than a rubber plantation. His goal was to build his vision of the ideal city by American standards, nestled amidst the lush greenery of the Amazon. The town was meticulously designed featuring modern infrastructure, hospitals, schools, generators, a sawmill, an 18-hole golf course, and even a dance hall. He enforced a strict meatless diet and the prohibition of alcohol. He also strongly promoted square dancing and poetry readings. However, Ford's vision clashed with the realities of local culture, and all these led to violent uprisings and resulted in the vandalizing of the city. He also didn't account for the unforgiving rainforest environment. Disease, such as the devastating outbreak of leaf blight, decimated the rubber trees year after year. Not even one drop of latex from Fordlandia ever made it into a Ford car. Unfortunately, Henry Ford's grand ambitions of attempting to transplant a slice of America into the heart of the Amazon, which was basically a sociological experiment, became his greatest failure. Though empty and rusted, the iconic water tower still stands today, but the Ford logo proudly painted on it has long since faded. Number 11. Famagusta, Cyprus Venturing into the Mediterranean, we encounter Famagusta, a city frozen in time on the sun-kissed island of Cyprus. Its golden era can be traced back to ancient times when it served as a major trading port under various civilizations, including the Greeks, Romans, and Byzantines. In more recent times, the city was a busy tourist destination known for its pristine beaches and lavish resorts. However, in 1974, the city's fate took a dramatic turn when conflict broke out on the island between Greek and Turkish communities. Turkey invaded that same year and resulted in the division of Cyprus, with a United Nations buffer zone running through the heart of the city. The Greek Cypriot population fled, leaving behind a deserted and divided Famagusta. The Turks annexed the Varosha district of the city and sectioned it off with barbed wire. Ever since, the old Greek Cypriots have been forbidden to re-enter and reclaim their homes and valuables. Efforts have been made to find a resolution for Famagusta's fate and reunify the island. But progress has been slow and complex. Varosha remains cordoned off, caught in the midst of geopolitical challenges and unresolved tensions. Today, Famagusta's decaying hotels, empty shops, and abandoned streets serve as a poignant reminder of a divided island. Number 10. Kolmanskop, Namibia An old sign with fractor German lettering welcomes you in this southwest corner of the African country of Namibia. Scattered buildings, which were once homes and businesses, sit now silently buried deep in sand and slowly being reclaimed by the desert. Zacharias Lawala was a railway worker in what was then known as German Southwest Africa, a colony built on violence and genocide. On April 14, 1908, he picked up what he thought was an unusually shiny stone, it turned out to be a huge diamond and the colonial rulers soon declared the region a forbidden zone to unauthorized persons. 
And so the town of Kolmanskop was born. In February 1909, a centralized diamond market was formed in town, which was exclusively accessible to a single German company. The diamonds were in such abundance that they could be picked off the ground by hand. Prior to World War I, over 2,000 pounds of diamonds were extracted from the sands of the Namib Desert. The town flourished with amenities such as ballrooms, casinos, theaters, ice factories, and a hospital with the first state-of-the-art X-ray station in the Southern Hemisphere. It's also said to have the first tram in Africa, but from our research that distinction goes to Alexandria, Egypt in 1860. Komanskop reached its pinnacle in the 1920s, with a population of approximately 1,300 people. 12% of the world's diamonds were mined there, and the town had the highest level of wealth per capita in the world. The beginning of the end came in 1928, when huge diamond reserves were found elsewhere in the southwest of Namibia. The town's diamond deposits depleted and mining ceased in 1950. Kolmanskop was completely abandoned by 1956. From hostile desert to one of the richest towns in all of Africa, and eventually a ghost town, all in the short span of less than half of century. Number 9. You've probably heard about it before, but no list of abandoned cities would be complete without mentioning Pripyat in Ukraine. Under the Soviet Union Republic, Pripyat was founded on February 4, 1970, to accommodate workers and their families for the infamous Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Only 16 years later, on April 26, 1986, it met its tragic fate when during a safety test, reactor number four exploded. All 49,360 residents of Pripyat were evacuated within hours, and during the subsequent weeks an additional 150,000 people from the surrounding area are believed to have been relocated on government order. The disaster was the product of a flawed Soviet reactor design coupled with serious mistakes made by the plant operators. It was a direct consequence of Cold War isolation and the resulting lack of any safety culture. Over 100 radioactive elements were released into the atmosphere, and radioactive smoke rose up to about one kilometer into the air. The official death toll directly attributed to Chernobyl is just 31 people. Two workers perished in the initial explosion, and 29 of the firemen died in the first three months after the explosion from acute radiation sickness. However, hundreds of thousands of so-called liquidators were sent in to clean up the site afterwards. Death due to thyroid cancer and leukemia among liquidators soared over the years. Mutations also occurred in plants and animals. Leaves changed shape and animals were born with physical deformities like extra appendages and facial malformations. Many European countries gave their citizens iodine pills to counter the possible effects of radiation. Within six months from the disaster, the Soviet authorities completed the construction of a massive concrete sarcophagus and covered the destroyed Chernobyl reactor. Experts have said it will take at least 3,000 years for the area to become safe, and according to a 2016 report, it is thought that the reactor site will not become habitable again for at least 20,000 years. Number 8. Oradour sur Glane, France. Although technically not a city but a village, Oradour sur Glane, in the heart of France, stands apart on our list for having one of the most tragic ends. During World War II, the village was the site of an unfathomable atrocity. Only four days after D Day, on June 10, 1944, the infamous Waffen SS unit, led by SS Sturmbannfuhrer Adolf Dieckmann, marched into the village blocking all entrances and exits. 240 women and 205 children were forced into the village church. Once locked inside, the troops first threw in grenades and set fire to the church. The few survivors who attempted to escape by running out through the flames were gunned down by SS troops at the exits. The 197 men from the village were lined up and SS troops opened fire with machine guns. The ruthless attack claimed the lives of almost every single citizen of the village. 
After the massacre, the Germans searched for and killed anyone left hiding in the village and continued on by burning the rest of Orador to the ground. The reason for this heinous attack remains unknown, but a common explanation was that Adolf Dieckmann received word that the decorated Nazi officer Helmut Kampfe was assassinated by the French resistance and the civilian villagers were assisting them. In 1946, French President Charles de Gaulle ordered that the ruins be left untouched as a national memorial. Number 7. Krakow, Italy The ancient hilltop town of Krakow must be the most picturesque ghost town on our list. Even Mel Gibson chose it as a filming location for his epic biblical drama film, Passion of the Christ. Krakow's captivating tale began with the arrival of Greek sailors stepping ashore in the glory days of the Byzantine Empire in the 6th century AD. It flourished and endured through the centuries, witnessing the rise and fall of empires, the passing of generations, the ebb and flow of life, and ended only a few decades ago when the last suitcase was zipped up. Perched atop a rocky outcrop in the region of Basilicata in southern Italy, the town provided strategic advantages, serving as a defensive stronghold throughout the centuries. Over time, its population grew, and by the mid-20th century, it was home to approximately 2,000 residents. However, the town's precarious hilltop site, combined with a series of violent earthquakes and landslides, saw Krakow deemed uninhabitable in the years after the Second World War. Efforts were made to stabilize the town, but by 1963, almost all the inhabitants were moved, and it was completely abandoned in 1980. Up close, the evident signs of profound decay become apparent. Towers devoid of bell chimes, rusted and desolate balconies, and sprouting weeds reclaiming the altar of San Nicola Church, while the nave stands exposed to the open sky. The echoes of daily life and the vibrant spirit that once filled its streets faded away, leaving behind dilapidated stone houses sprawling down the hill slopes. Number 6. Kadichan, Russia Completely isolated, deep in remote Siberia stand the haunting remains of a town built by Gulag prisoners during World War II. The closest, decently-sized city is a 10-hours drive, according to Google Maps. However, people that traveled there said it takes several days. Adding to the isolation, the only highway leading to the town is inaccessible for most of the year due to extreme climate condition. It was founded as a coal mining town in 1939, and at its peak, the population of Kadichan reached approximately 11,000 residents. During the Soviet era, Kadichan played a vital role in fueling the country's industrial machinery. The town's coal mines operated tirelessly, supplying coal to power plants, factories, and transportation networks. However, the fortunes of Kadichan took a downturn in 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed. The exhaustion of one of the two mines that the town relied upon for employment contributed to the gradual decline of the town's prosperity. Furthermore, the social and economic upheaval during the post-Soviet era caused many residents to seek better opportunities elsewhere. The final blow came in 1996, when an explosion in the last remaining mine killed six people, which led to its closure. Despite having no jobs and no income, a handful of people, roughly about 500, stayed back in the dying city until the late 90s. However, when the government cut off all remaining utilities, life in the far north became impossible, and Kadichan was completely abandoned by the end of the century. Due to poor record-keeping during the Cold War era in Soviet Russia, our knowledge about this town remains scarce, and now vacant buildings stay as silent witnesses to a fading era. Number 5. Agdam, Azerbaijan Agdam began its humble existence in the late 1700s, but it wasn't until 1828 that it gained official city status. Over the years, its population swelled to around 30,000 by the early 1990s. It was the largest city in the small region of Nagorno-Karabakh, a landlocked area in Azerbaijan. 
The region has been constantly embroiled in a tug of war with neighboring Armenia, as their belief was that Nagorno-Karabakh had ties to the ancient Armenian kingdom dating back to the 4th century BC. The conflict fueled by this territorial dispute escalated in the summer of 1993, when in just a few short months from June to August, tens of thousands of Armenian troops swept through the Karabakh region. The consequences for Agdam were catastrophic, as the city became a battleground and a casualty of war. All the population was displaced, and what structures remained standing after the initial fighting were decimated by heavy artillery afterward to prevent recapturing of the city. For 27 years, Agdam remained under Armenian occupation until Azerbaijani forces recaptured the city on November 20, 2020. But Agdam now lies in ruins, with bullet-riddled buildings and a poignant atmosphere. Number 4. Kayakoy, Turkey. This settlement was once known as Levisi and had a population of around 10,000 Muslim Turks and Greek Orthodox Christians living side by side in harmony. It became Kayakoy, or Rock Village, when almost 7,000 Christians suddenly left, leaving behind only their beautiful stone homes and churches. It happened about 100 years ago in 1923, when Kayakoy was forcefully abandoned at the end of the Greco-Turkish War. As part of the Treaty of Lausanne, Greece and Turkey agreed to a population exchange so that each country could claim one major religion in the path toward ethnic and national homogeneity. This agreement involved the resettlement of around 1.5 million people. Muslims in Greece were resettled in Turkey, and Greek Orthodox Christians in Turkey were moved to Greece. Following the mass exodus, Kayakoy never recovered and faced a rapid decline. The 500 abandoned stone houses and two churches were declared a historical site by the Turkish government in 1988, and today is one of the most well-known ghost towns. Number 3. Plymouth, Montserrat the Caribbean island of Montserrat is an overseas territory of the United Kingdom and was home to about 11,000 people up until 1995. It was first discovered by Christopher Columbus on his second voyage to the New World in 1493, but the first settlers came from Ireland in 1632 and founded the island's capital Plymouth. Fast forward a few hundred years later, on July 18, 1995, the long-dormant Soufriere Hills volcano awakened with an unprecedented fury. In a matter of moments, pyroclastic flows, scorching ash clouds, and volcanic debris cascaded down the slopes, mercilessly engulfing the town, killing dozens and forcing the entire population, estimated at around 4,000 people, to flee their homes. Although residents were allowed to return in 1997, later that same year eruptions surged once again, sealing Plymouth's fate. In a series of colossal blasts between August 4th and 8th, 1997, approximately 80% of the town was destroyed, burying it under 4.6 feet of ash. The British Navy intervened and helped evacuate the city. These eruptions lead to a permanent abandonment of Plymouth, and 7,000 people are forced to evacuate the island, many going to mainland UK. The exodus of Montserrat's population and the obliteration of its businesses plunged the island into a deep economic depression. Today, the southern region of the island still remains an exclusion zone, as the volcanic activity is not showing signs of slowing down. From a beautiful Caribbean island capital to a desolate landscape, Plymouth's buildings are now hollow shells and their interiors buried under layers of volcanic debris. Number 2. Hashima Island, Japan The eerie-looking Hashima Island, also known as Battleship Island due to its shape, is located just over 10 miles off the coast of Nagasaki, Japan. The 16-acre concrete island emerged as a coal mining colony in 1887, fueled by the industrial boom in Japan. Mitsubishi purchased the island in 1890 and began underwater mining operations shortly after. It dug tunnels stretching 3,000 feet below sea level, and by 1950 the mine was producing 14,000 tons of coal a month. 
Miners with their families flock to the island seeking a chance at a better life, and in order to house them, the Mitsubishi Corporation built a miniature city, complete with apartment towers, a school, a hospital, a theater, Buddhist and Shinto shrines, a bathhouse, and other communal facilities. As the demand for coal soared, Hashima Island thrived and reached a peak population of 5,259 in 1959, making it the most densely populated area on Earth at the time. Although it was backbreaking work for the Japanese employees, working at great depths every day in temperatures of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it was tougher for the tens of thousands of Korean and Chinese unpaid laborers who were brought against their will and forced to work under harsh conditions in the coal mines of Hashima Island. During World War II, to compensate for the labor shortage in the country, the Japanese government forcibly recruited workers from other countries. It is estimated that the Hashima Island and six other similar sites forced over 60,000 Koreans and tens of thousands of Chinese to work in their coal mines. Also, records released by the Republic of Korea government and Mitsubishi show that 1,442 Koreans and 722 Chinese workers were tortured to death on the island. But over time, the coal reserves below the island ran out, Mitsubishi closed the mine, and the island was completely deserted in 1974. Battleship Island was closed to visitors until 2015, when UNESCO designated it a World Heritage Site. Its desolate beauty and eerie aura have also made it a popular filming location, attracting filmmakers seeking a haunting backdrop. It was featured in several movies, including the 2012 James Bond film, Skyfall. It's not too late. We could turn back now. I wouldn't be so sure. Number 1. Akarmara, Abkhazia. Did you ever hear about the Republic of Abkhazia? Its independence won in the secession war with Georgia between 1992 and 1993 has gained little international recognition. However, it is recognized as an independent state by a few countries like Russia, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Syria, and Nauru. Although to be fair, most of us didn't hear about Nauru either. Located in the northwestern part of Georgia, bordered by the Black Sea to the southwest and the Caucasus Mountains and Russia to the northeast, Abkhazia held a reputation as a favored vacation spot for the Soviet elite. Within the boundaries of the Republic of Abkhazia lies abandoned yet another forgotten Soviet-era ghost town named Akarmara. In 1942, amidst the peak of World War II, Akarmara was granted town status and became heavily industrialized. During the heyday of the Soviet Union, the population exceeded 40,000, with the majority of residents working in the mining industry. As the Soviet Union crumbled, escalating ethnic tensions led to the outbreak of the Abkhazian Civil War, pitting Abkhaz separatists against the Georgian military. The newly formed country won the war in 1993 with the help of Russia, but half of its population were Georgians, so 250,000 people were expelled from their homes, virtually halving Abkhazia's population. As a result, the 40,000 Akarmara residents vanished overnight, leaving the town abandoned. It seems that even Google Maps is attempting to erase the memory of this place. When searching for Akarmara, you will be redirected to the neighboring town of Tukvarcheli, which is almost completely abandoned as well. The seven stories high communist era apartment buildings now house only one or two families. Which abandoned ghost town would you visit? Thanks for staying with us until the end and we'll see you in the next video.